Today, we're going to talk about our project, which was verifying building evacuation safety through 3D re reconstruction. Here's what our poster looks like. However, you are going to use this slideshow to dive a little bit deeper into each section. First, our a general summary of our project is that we show a novel method for checking if a building's evacuation paths are up to building code by generating and processing a 3D point cloud model of a building. We convert a, th this point cloud to a 2D grid map and detect all the exits on the grid. Finally, we use a path planning algorithm to ensure that there's a safe evacuation path within the, the building. A brief background of what the, why this problem is important is that construction projects and, and existing buildings require periodic safety inspections throughout the lifetime of a project. This problem is currently being solved manually through contracted site inspectors. And the things that these site inspectors check are access to exits, short egress paths, and minimum corridor widths, which we'll be checking. So our data set is from the Gates building, and it is composed of 3,704 data points. Um, and each of these data points have a depth image, an RGB image, and a camera pose image. You can see an example of the RGB and depth images in the images below. For our methods, we first start with our raw images from the data set, and we generate a 3D point cloud by inverting the perspective projection, because we know the depth data and we know the camera's intrinsic and extrinsic parameters. Then from the 3D point cloud, we generate a 2D grid map of the floor by eliminating the Z coordinate and then finding the ground plane of the entire point cloud and then detecting any obstacles that lie above the point above the ground plane and marking those as obstacles in the grid. We then run a YOLO CNN on the RGB images to detect any doors in the scene then project these doors into the world space and finally convert that into points on our grid that we can use as our exits. Finally, we run safety checks using A star on this 2D grid map and with the goal of, achieve, of uh, navigating to these exits. And in the meantime, also passing any egress checks that we'll talk about. On the top left, we can see the point cloud that's of uh, the reconstructed point cloud of the 3D points from the, each of the RGB images. In the bottom left, we see a top down view of this point cloud where the color is encoded as the Z coordinate. And so the dark blue corresponds to the ground plane, and then the lighter blues and reds correspond to higher up objects and obstacles over the ground. We then convert this into this middle image where we see the uh, obstacles as black, and then the free space as white, and then the doors are marked as red, again, that we detect from uh, our yellow CNN. Four egress requirements were checked against the plan that was extracted from the 3D point cloud. First, whether or not all points on the map can generate a valid egress to an exit. Second, whether or not those egress paths have a continuous width of two feet. Third, whether or not those paths exceed 75 feet in length. And finally, minimum number of exits on the floor plan. These requirements were simplified versions of the requirements from the California Building Code to prove and illustrate the concept of this project. To prefer the second requirement for the minimum width, we dilated the walls instead of dilating the paths by width requirement over two feet. Then we perform the egress check, where the purple color indicates the cells that don't have egress, and the orange cells are those that are capable of egress but exceeding the maximum length of 75 feet. A sanity check of the plan will show that the color assignments make sense as the purple cells are blocked in pockets, and the orange are the points where they're the furthest from the exits, marked in green. So for conclusions, we've built a code pipeline that is able to generate a map that enables decision-making for layout design. With a brief look at this map, we can conclude that some rooms are partially in incapable of egress, suggesting that a re-layouting of furniture should be done to enable safer evacuation. If the 75 feet maximum egress length was maintained, building designers would also conclude that an additional egress or exit would need to be placed around that area on the right. For better accuracy of this model, it would um, it would to it would be to have a classifier between permanent and temporary obstacles, as furniture may be considered as irrelevant in evacuation simulations. That's why there are a lot of purple rooms. For an even robust check, we suggest further studies where classifying rooms and vertical obstacles are considered. These are the references that we use for the project, and thank you for listening. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>